All right. We'll tell you what, Elsie. We're just going to give it a few seconds for us to work out our tech here. Maybe a few more seconds okay, cool. for people to join up uh, so that they can join us on the interview here. But thanks again so much for taking some time out of your day and syncing up with us here on the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast and the live feed. You bet. You bet. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if, if you guys are joining us here on the live feed, what we're going to actually do is interview Elsie's experience and just have her share her story about chiropractic care and how it relates to her experiences with her pregnancy and also with her kids. So that being said, if you guys want to just post in the comment section below, say hello, tell us where you're from. And then even at the end, if you guys have any questions, We'll actually try to field those questions here on the live feed and uh, answer those uh, today as well. And if we don't get to those questions, we'll always go back and comment and respond to them <clears throat> so that we make sure we get you guys taken care of. Sound good? Sounds great to me. Awesome. Well, welcome, families, to the Michigan Family Wellness Podcast. Again, my name is Dr. Kyle Walner. I'm joined today by Elsie Escobar. And I'm just so thankful and grateful to be bringing this wonderful message of chiropractic care to you all this morning. Elsie, we always ask our guests two questions for every episode. So real quick, tell us a little bit more what family looks like for you. Oh, my. Family is um, um, relationship, uh, listening, um, being open to transition, and... Uh, allowing ourselves to continue to expand and grow when we're connected with something bigger like blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's a major theme here on the podcast. That's a major theme here in the community. You know, family is great to have those blood relatives, you know, the people that you live with essentially, but it's also great to, you know, have the people that you abide with, the people that you do life with and that you're in community with. Major theme here on the podcast. Another question we ask all the time, Elsie, is, have you ever visited Michigan? Do you have any kind of a favorite part or a lake or a trail? Anything there for us? No, I haven't visited Michigan. I, all I know is that I have a lot of friends that are from Michigan, and I see all their pictures on Instagram. Michiganders, awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the hashtags. That's about the extent of it for me, yeah. Well, obviously, I'm biased. You know, it is quite the state of beauty, in my opinion, as I've mentioned a couple times here before. My wife and I are looking forward to going up to the Upper Peninsula. So we're going to go oh, to cool. Pictured, Pictured Rocks is the name of the park that we're going to. Just some beautiful Sweet. scenery. And we're looking forward to that later on in August here. Awesome. That, yeah, that being said, Elsie, the whole reason why I wanted to bring you on the podcast today is to get your unique perspective on your experiences with chiropractic care and how it affected specifically your pregnancy. So if you don't mind, what I find with these conversations that make them most raw, real, relevant, and powerful is just sharing our experiences. So can you go ahead and do that for our listeners today? Sure. I had very limited experience with chiropractic uh, prior to being pregnant. You know, there was a point when, like, when I was a waitress in L.A., there was a, a couple of twin chiropractors that used to come, and they were, like, often coming into the restaurant all the time, and they were always going, like, come into, come in, come on, come on. And I was like, oh, my God. So one day I decided to go in and they gave, they schooled me on like subluxation and they made me watch this video and I right. learned all kinds of stuff from them, you know, mm -hmm. and that was cool. Um, getting adjusted and then having a massage. Sweet. You know, but then, and, and you know, and then I moved out uh, from LA. So that was like essentially my, my experience with it. I didn't have anything happening in my body at that time mm -hmm. really, or, or uh, at all. Um, and then I, I got pregnant, and during the last part of the pregnancy, we found out that my little baby was breech. And mm -hmm. so we really wanted to have a vaginal birth, so we, we wanted to do everything possible to have her turn around by herself. Right. And I did all kinds of research and, you know, found about what chiropractic can do for that. And I did a quick search on the internet, interwebs, you know, chiropractic. At that time, I was living in Pittsburgh, and... And then I got a hit and I booked an appointment and I decided to go that route. Nice. Unfortunately, I went in a little bit too late. You know, I think I was, 
I think I started to go like at 36 weeks. Okay. You know what I mean? Something mm -hmm. like that. And sure. I, I, I don't, I, I was a little bit late to the ball, to, you know, to play at that mm -hmm. time. And, um, and then we decided to also add a version to the mix. And when gotcha. I went to get a, a version to the mix, I found out that I had a, an undiagnosed placenta previa. Mm -hmm. So I had to have an emergency C-section like right away, right then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the chiropractic necessarily didn't really, I guess it, it helped me understand and it made me think like, oh, I should have come here sooner because the doctor, Dr. Chris was amazing and I really loved him. Um, but because I had such a wonderful relationship where I felt so well taken care of by him, I thought, I think I want to go back to him as soon as I'm, I'm done, you know, with, um, sure. in, 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 you know, after my C-section mm -hmm. and being a, a yoga person, I, I kind of didn't want to push my body at all. I wanted to make sure that I honored the six weeks, at least the six weeks that I was given to heal. Right. And, but I did know that I needed to move my body and I knew how that would really impact me. So I essentially scheduled to see him almost right after like six weeks. Right. And I also had him work on my baby, like literally go. like right after there, just yep. because I was like, why not? Mm -hmm. you know? So we went in and um, we kind of like started a, another, a I guess, treatment, you know, for me during that time. And I think postpartum for me was like when I really fell in love with with the experience of chiropractic. Absolutely. You know, I can't agree with everything that you're saying, you know, more or enough, Elsie. This is why I'm so passionate about this kind of care. And honestly, you know, I talk to a lot of women, a lot of mothers, a lot of parents, actually, that really do want those natural birth, births. They want those, you know, alternative options out there because we do see rising rates of C-sections out there. And again, nothing against our current medical, like we need those uh, options for people in place. We need that emergency care. But for people that really want to embrace the natural process that want to have, you know, gosh, we could talk all day long about the benefits of chiropractic care during pregnancy. And this, I'm just going to read a couple from, this is actually from the American Pregnancy Association. You know, so if, you want to maintain a healthier pregnancy if you want to control symptoms of nausea, if you want to reduce the labor time and the time of delivery, if you want to relieve back, neck, and joint pain, and if you want to prevent the potential for cesarean section delivery, what we're offering here, what we can do with our hands as chiropractors is so significant and so profound. So I just want to thank you and acknowledge you again for sharing your story you know, with us today on the podcast. That being said, can you tell us more specifically, so I remember we were talking in our pre-chat, your first delivery was actually an emergency C-section, is that correct? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, because it was, they didn't know that I had mm -hmm. a, you know, the placenta was, was placed the way it was, so it, I was 37 weeks at that time, gotcha. and so they immediately said, yeah. you know, we're doing this, and then they went, oh, mm -hmm. well, you're having a baby in about 10 minutes. Right, <laughs> I was right. like, oh my God. Yeah. Um, so that's how it started. But you know, what was really great for the baby is that she was also breech, right? And she was frank right. breech. So she was like in the, you know, in a V shape mm -hmm. with her little butt at the bottom and her legs up. And she was essentially kind of smashed like that. Mm -hmm. And she had very little mobility for quite a few months. Uh, yep. And of course, I, I didn't quite know that. And so it was interesting is when she was born, she, her body like, you know, catapulted back, like, as soon as you put her down, she would go thwink. And she would just like fold over again. Gotcha. And, um, and of course, the first thing they checked was her hips to right. see if her hips were dislocated or not. Mm -hmm. And she was fine. Yeah. But um, we also felt that it would be great because we trusted immediately Dr. Chris to, to just kind of check her out to see if like her body was doing right. okay. If, you know, if we could facilitate in any way, you know, opening her body, allowing her, especially for her digestion um, things like that, that I had read that would be really helpful for her. And so we kind of kept going for me and for her in postpartum, mm -hmm. especially during those first um, months that really, um, that really helped her ability to kind of like release or, or like digest her food better, not have so much gas, um, all, all of that kind of stuff. I, of, of course, it was still having an infant. So there was still a challenge throughout the entire time. 
but right. I felt that at least we were helping her kind of with her body. I think it added to her ability to be out of the belly. Mm -hmm. So brilliant. And yeah. again, what we're doing as chiropractors with our hands is we're correcting structural alignment. So yeah. again, I, I cannot say, or I cannot guarantee that we're going to correct you know, if the placenta is blocking the birth canal or if the mm -hmm. baby is breached. But we can say that we are correcting the segmental movement of the pelvis, of the sacrum, of the lumbar spine. And then by extension, we're correcting the central nervous system, which ultimately is what controls our body and how everything works. So everything you're saying makes absolute sense. Tell us a little bit more moving along to your second birth now. I remember also in our pre-chat, we were saying you had really kind of felt more low back pain during that time. And then going through the chiropractic care really helped to relieve the low back pain. Is that correct? Yeah, I had some um, psoas. My psoas, my right psoas is a little psoas. bit shorter than the other one, you know, and it kind of causes a little bit of misalignment in my hip area and mm -hmm. whatnot. Um, when I went to chiropractic, I didn't actually do it throughout the entire pregnancy. I was incredibly physical and I practiced yoga and all this kind of stuff. So I felt fairly steady and strong. Um, I think I, I went towards the latter end again, just to kind of like help me find space. For me, that's what it was. It was to create more space in my body so that I would have, you know, feeling that like just better. But when I had the back pain come was actually after I had the baby okay. because she, this one was, she, we had, um, we had a V-back. So we, we, that was awesome. She mm -hmm. came super quickly. And, um, and then when she was about, oh my gosh, a, a, a week or two old, I was just changing her diapers. And then I, all I did was like turn my body slightly over. And as soon as I just turned very gently with, you know, with the baby, I heard something go poof. <laughs> right. And then I heard, I felt my entire right side warm and tingly mm -hmm. going up and down. And I was like, well, I don't think that that's a positive thing gotcha, yeah. <laughs> and sure enough I uh as, as experienced some pretty bad pain after mm -hmm. that I mean really bad I had an inflamed SI joint my uh I couldn't fold at all mm -hmm. uh, my mom had I had to pull myself on the bed and pull myself up to a seated position with my arms and my mom would place her so that I could nurse her it would take me about 20 minutes to get out of bed. Like I would roll over because gotcha. like, yeah. it was so painful. Mm -hmm. And so we went to the chiropractor. We went yeah. to Dr. Chris and he, oh gosh, it was so awful. I mean, he, I mean, he, he was great, but mm -hmm. it was, I was in so much pain and right. he was able to sort of realign me, realign me. Mm -hmm. obviously that wasn't like immediate release, yes. but he was able to get me back into a place of, you know, alignment in my body. And he gave me some stuff or some ideas as, so, as to um, what to expect and when to be a little bit more worried if things didn't get better. And I just had a lot of inflammation. I mean, it was just an inflamed area yeah. back there. Yeah. And that was a, I mean, it, it sucked, but it, thankfully, thank God that I was able to go to him. That's yeah. all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Especially yeah. in the context of pregnancy, you know, when a mother is carrying her baby, you know, and she may be experiencing some low back pain that may turn into some more severe low back pain. A lot of mothers that I talk to, Elsie, they don't want to take a lot of the NSAIDs, a lot of the over, over the counters, a lot of the painkillers mm -hmm. because of that mother baby connection via the placenta, yeah. you know, right. all, like everything you're I eating getcha. Yeah, is ultimately going, you know, circulating through the baby as well. So that is something to consider. That being said, I also wanted to touch on, you know, your expertise within yoga. You mentioned the psoas muscle. Maybe you can tell us more about that. But I just feel such a connection between people that practice yoga and incorporate chiropractic care as well. That's such a synergistic effect. Would you agree? Yeah, it did. It actually really helped. I didn't think about it before. I didn't really... Um, I think that part of it is that I was, I also had a lot of training in therapeutics. So I'm really adept with body and I actually take people out of pain. So mm -hmm. I've set the, ma I've, I've manually adjusted psoas muscles. I've manually adjusted upper back and neck and like, so I have a, a working understanding of the body in this way. Now, when chiropractic really um, 
kind of hit home for me was especially after having my C-section when I was unable at that time to, to do the therapy, if you will, with mm -hmm. my body that I right. knew how to do because I had, I had just had major surgery and I had to heal. So what was really great is that instead of me actively putting my body in these places and engaging at that time, the best choice was for me to have an external adjustment so mm -hmm. that someone else was able to kindly and softly place my body in a position of alignment rather than me having to do it because I didn't have the strength nor should I have been doing that to put mm -hmm. myself in that position. So it, it sort of was like a, it's sad. I mean, I, in a way it was like doing yoga without having to do it. <laughs> so, right. Without going through the class. Like sure. I didn't have to go through the class. I was just very simply able to do it. So that was, uh, that was a real blessing for that for me. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, just to go back and circle back, you mentioned the psoas muscle, you know, the yes. primary flexors of the hip joint itself. Yeah. This is a large muscle, one of the largest in the body actually, that comes off the front of the lumbar spine, crosses the hip joint, inserts on mm -hmm. the leg. And like you said, Elsie, like this muscle alone, when it gets contracted, or it has any kind of a neurologic signal telling it to like, you know, really tense up, it can cause such incredible low back pain, both for just, you know, yeah. the regular everyday person and kids, as well as uh, pregnant women as well. Um, and just oh, because yeah. we're, we're always sitting, we're always flexed, we're always shortening those attachment points. So yeah, it, it's a major deal. And I can't tell you how much I work with that. Uh, just helping people out of psoas pain itself here at the office as well. Tell us a little bit more, you know, Elsie, this is the Family Wellness Lifestyle Podcast. So can you tell us more about how your family now just kind of uses chiropractic care? I know we were talking about your husband being a little bit taller, a little bit longer limb. Mm -hmm. How's that benefited? He's, well, he really, um, he's really benefited at all uh, uh, as well because he came with me to the chiropractic appointments and he mm -hmm. got to know Dr. Chris. And then, um, you know, he, he happens to do a lot of work with his own body too. And he's, he understands a lot about his own alignment and a lot about his own, his own body. So he was able to then go to him whenever, especially when he was doing, he, he does construction a lot of the time, green building. And during that sure. construction time, there are a lot of repetitive motions inside of his body. And maybe he is in positions that aren't necessarily in alignment, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing something on a ceiling or on the ground that really put a lot of pressure on his body. So primarily, especially, and especially after he's done like big builds or something like that, he'll go to Dr. Chris and have some general adjustments for his body so that he can move forward. Um, I think that it's been really added to our, our wellness to be able to go whenever we can mm -hmm. to get all of us adjusted uh, at once. And even my, you know, both of the girls have seen Dr. Chris since they were infants and we don't really go all the time because that's not something that we can do as a family constantly, sure. but we, we do try to touch base with Dr. Chris at least yep. twice a year where we go in and we say like, hey, can you check, check us out? Um, things like that. And the girls have really, have, have really, um, you know, they're open to it. They haven't really ever been, I don't know, against it or anything like that. And yeah. what I loved about it too is like when we took them as infants, especially my second one, when, when you do that thing that I told you, what is that thing, the, the muscle... Muscle testing. Yes, muscle testing. Well, you muscle test Applied the mom. kinesiology, yep. Yeah. Yep. So we took the baby, and then he checked, especially with Mei Mei's neck. There was some funky stuff going on with her neck, or we sure. felt it was anyway, because mm -hmm. babies are always in these awkward positions. Right. And so when he adjusts her, you know, he will have my hand, or and then depending upon how I react, I guess, energetically to whatever's happening there, mm -hmm. he'll do those adjustments according to that. Um, sensation, Brilliant. which is really um, beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. and um, he's, he's worked with them now, now we're, they're eight and five and we've been going on there forever, you know, and it's funny, mm -hmm. if you scroll through my profile page, you can see um, there's a picture that Dr. Powell just posted of my hunter, I think a couple of years ago, and she has the chiropractic sticker on her mouth that she just went and she gotcha. just stuck it in her mouth. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's been amazing. So, so great. Awesome. 
Well, I want to further drive home some points that you mentioned there, Elsie. For people who are listening and joining us on the live feed, you really want to work with someone you trust. That's why I'm really glad that mm -hmm. Elsie had really good chiropractic care here. You also mentioned the muscle testing, applied kinesiology, for those that may not be familiar with that. That is essentially the objective approach to assessing someone's nervous system. So rather than just, you know, feeling someone's spine and doing motion palpation, all of that's phenomenal, all of that's fantastic. What we can actually do as trained professionals is actually tune into that person's neurologic system via their muscle contraction. So, you know, for someone to contract their arm, their brain has to tell, signal their muscle via the nerve to actually do a muscle contraction. And so using those principles of biology, using those principles of neurology, we can further figure out not only where to adjust, but also like what directions, what levels, you know, all these different things. Uh, nutrition's a big one as well. And then to Elsie's point, you can also, you know, with kids, you can't always tell a kid, okay, hold your arm here. So that's why you use mom as kind of an yeah. intermediary for that. So those are great examples um, as well. Well, Elsie, I do want to actually key our listeners into another point here. This is also from the American Pregnancy Association. This answers the question, how does chiropractic care benefit women with fertility issues? So here we go. Your body is an amazing creation that can accomplish numerous miraculous tasks, including creating new life. These miraculous tasks are accomplished under the direction of the central nervous system, which is the master communication system of the entire body. Chiropractic care is a safe and natural approach to enhancing the body's ability to function properly. This is accomplished through enhancing the function of that master control system, the central nervous system. So doctors of chiropractic are nervous system specialists and reducing interference in the nervous system is their primary goal. Like we mentioned earlier, maintaining a healthy pregnancy, controlling the symptoms of nausea or morning sickness, reducing the time of labor and delivery, relieving back, neck, and or joint pain, and preventing cesarean delivery. I also want to highly advocate for doing your own yoga practice, which brings me back to asking Elsie more about her efforts with yoga and I believe your own podcast as well. Can you tell us more about that, Elsie? Uh, yeah, I actually, I haven't been teaching uh, public classes as of late, but I do work privately with a lot of people. I'm not with a lot of people, with people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I do have a podcast that you can do. It's Elsie's Yoga Class. Essentially, it's still out there. I haven't produced anything for over three years now, but I have over 100 free audio classes that you can do over and over and over again, uh, which is why I think it's still doing so well because people tend to do that. So awesome. um, I'm and it's all audio. And I know people often say, like, well, how can you teach yoga with just with no pictures? And really, I think part of learning uh, about yoga and about having a practice is that you do need to learn to listen mm -hmm. and uh, to take it rather than having external cues, things that you see to trigger something in your body. At first, it's really wonderful. But a lot of the time, we really do need to go like, where is my right leg? How do I move it forward? Mm -hmm. How do I make the shape she's saying? And it really takes you into a deeper understanding of what the practice itself is, which is really more of an inner experience rather than what you see out of yourself. Absolutely. Perfect. And Elsie, as we start to wrap up here, I do want to just scroll through these comments here for a second and see if we can <laughs> Very answer. Very silly. Yeah, see if we, we can answer. We have silly comments. <laughs> let's see. We have uh, Crystal chiming in. Um, let's see. Look, just looking for questions here. We also have Patrick uh, asking about scoliosis. So just from a chiropractic perspective, Patrick, the goal for scoliosis or the management for scoliosis is to prevent the increase of the curvature. So chiropractic care can be very help, helpful with that. I also go to a lot of seminars uh, and they talk about specific chiropractors who only do scoliosis care. So that may be something mm -hmm. to consider uh, if you, know, you have someone in the family that might have scoliosis. So... Well, that being said, Elsie, again, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the live feed and joining us here on the podcast. Can you tell us more about where our listeners can go to find more about you? 
Oh, wow. You can go to lcescobar.com if you guys want to check that out, lcescobar.com. And if you're in Pittsburgh and you want to have some incredible chiropractic care, you can go to Cal, uh, Powell Chiropractic, um, and uh, Dr. Chris will, I'm sure, take care of you. So, uh, yeah, I have nothing but good stuff to say about him. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Elsie. I really appreciate your time. You're a yoga teacher. You're a mother. You're a wife. All these great things. Thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yay. Awesome.